endothelial cells that line the blood vessels, uh, moving it from one side to the other, right? And so this is where I wanted to kind of bring up that last point right here, is that this, right, this endocytosis is occurring on the apical surface, or so-called aluminum, because it's facing the lumen over here where all the blood is, right? And so it's, this is what the stuff we want to give to the body cells. So it packages it up, goes across, and it excretes it on the basal surface of the cell right here, secreting it into the interstitial fluid. Right? So there's a, there's a polarity here, right? It's bringing it in on one side. The side that's facing the lumen is, you know, the process of endocytosis is occurring. The baso, basal surface over here is undergoing exocytosis right here. So there's a difference on the sides here, right? This is where form follows function, right? The anatomy meets the physiology right here. The localization of this dip, two different processes, endocytosis and exocytosis. So same thing is going on with those channels and carriers and whether you're active or, or whatever, right? When I talk about here, right? In the lumen of your gut, over here, you had all the digested particles, right? And the cells that line the lumen, right? There was, had one side, the apical part of the cell was facing the lumen. Those are gonna be, have all those sodium glucose transporters, those secondary active transporters, because there's low glucose here and higher glucose here. On the basal side, the basal lateral, which means baso and a little bit on the side right here, right on the other side that's facing the interstitial fluid, right, you'll have those glucose transporters that is just going to be on the concentration rate. It's just facilitated diffusion, right? So the distribution of these channels, right, are going to reflect, you know, the fact that you have low glucose here, high glucose here, low glucose here. Right, and that's the way the glucose is going to move, right? So this gets into the whole polarity of these transporting epithelial lining right here that's going to, you know, line these surfaces where you're going to bring stuff into the body, right, or exchange stuff, right? This is your lumen of your small intestine. The same thing will be true again for the kidney. Right? You get all this filtrate in here passing through these tubes. And then on the outside here is all your interstitial fluid and blood vessels. On the apical surface that's facing the lumen, you got the sodium glucose transporters bringing stuff in actively because you got, you, know, you want to get every drop of glucose left. And so you're bringing it all in actively. And then on the other side, you can let it out by diffusion because there's lower glucose here than there's inside the cell, right? The apical and then the basal surface right here. So on this, here's some pictures. We, you know, this is one of the characteristics of epithelial linings in general, right? In particular, you know, we're going to see this when we're talking about these transporting epithelia, bringing in stuff from a lumen into the body, right? Or bring, leaving stuff, getting stuff from the body and exporting it out into the lumen, right? So your epithelial cells, right? There's oxygen, there's glucose, there's all sorts of stuff in here. They could take it up into the cells. They can do stuff with it over here, and then they can secrete it out into the luminal surface if this was, say, uh, an exocrine gland, right? Or if it was a uh, one of these transporting epithelia, like your stomach and everything, it has glucose and stuff up here. It's going to bring stuff in. And then that stuff is going to go through the other end and then eventually get into your blood vessels over here, right? So the things that are going to bring stuff in over here, there's going to be certain channels to bring it in. And there's going to be certain channels over here to bring stuff out, right? And they're going to be differently distributed based on whether they're facing the lumen or the interstitial fluid on the other side right here. So just to contrast, right, your blood cells are floating around in the blood, they're spinning around everything. There's no polarity to them. If you looked at the membrane, there wouldn't be this kind of polarity to them, right? We're talking something kind of specifically about uh, 
these epithelial linings right here, right? Same thing can be said for fibroblasts. You wouldn't have any polarity to them necessarily. The channel distribution, although it might be in different ways, it wouldn't be, it we wouldn't see that kind of difference, right? Whereas any kind of cell that's either excreting stuff or absorbing stuff, you're gonna have a side of the cell that's facing the lumen and a side of the cell that's facing the interstitial fluid. Right? And in this case, this is a pancreatic cell. Here are the ducts, right? And this is the close-up of one of them. The cell is, again, taking stuff in. It's making things like digestive enzymes and sodium bicarb and stuff, packaging them up and spinning it into the lumen so that it can be secreted into the, you know, out these ducts here and into the intestinal lumen over here. All right, so this side, it'd be much different from this side, right? What the sort of channel distribution, because they're going to be doing different things. All right, here's another, you know, here's another thing, your stomach, the lining of your stomach right here, right? And here's a bunch of epithelial cells lining uh, the stomach uh, or your small intestines or whatever. Right? You'll have a lumen with all your digested particles, or maybe you have glands over here that are secreting stuff, right? And in this case, you would have like stuff in here that the cells are gonna take in and then bring into the interstitial fluid over here and then eventually the blood vessels over here. Or you have these glands over here, which is gonna be bringing stuff in and then secreting them out into the lumen, right? So the side of each one of these cells, right, it's gonna be different on this side than this side over here. And the same thing will be true with any of these cells. And by different, I mean, among other things, the distribution of those membrane transport proteins are gonna be much different, right? And so here is, you know, close up of your intestinal lining, right? In this case, here's some goblet cells. They're kind of, again, bringing stuff in from the interstitial fluid because it's gotta come from some source. They're making mucus and they're secreting it out on here, right? So you might have channels over here bringing in stuff and then you have exocytosis on the luminal side, whereas these are all stuff that's secre uh, absorbing uh, like glucose and stuff like that. There's gonna be all those glucose channels bringing it into the cell and then they're gonna be bringing it out so it can go in the ICF, right? Into the blood vessels over here, right? It's a luminal surface or apical and then the basement surface over here. You don't have to remember every single thing I'm saying, mind you. I'm just giving you examples because these will be coming up and you gotta be really kind of clear because we're talking about these transport proteins and stuff like that. Don't keep them abstract in your head, right? They have real purposes, right? And they're doing real things as far as the function of your body goes, right? Here's another one of your stomach. Right, here's all the interstitial fluid and whatever, you know, loose connective tissue around these cells right here. And all these different types of cells are secreting all different sorts of things like hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. And again, you are bringing stuff in from the lumen and then you're uh, from the interstitial fluid and then secreting it out into these ducts right over and into these spaces right here. So this side, again, is going to be different from this side right here, right? As far as what it's bringing in and what it's spitting out, right? Because everything is specific. All these channels are specific, right? Here's another example. You sick of this yet? Here's some sweat glands over here, right? They're embedded within your dermis over here. There are these tubules, right? Lined with cuboidal cells or whatever. Right? And they're bringing in stuff from the interstitial fluid, uh, around here, and then they're putting it out, right, for sweat, right, which is gonna have like salt and stuff in it so that it goes into the lumen over here, right? So these distribution of these membrane transports, right, are gonna be different. Oh, here's another example. It's not really, it's the same one we talked about, right? Here's the stomach lumen, just like those cells before. Um, on this side, you have these, maybe a distribution say chlorine channels and in this side we inside the cell you are you know taking 
carbon dioxide, making it into that carbonic acid, which dissociates into the bicarbonate ion and the hydrogen. We're going to use those hydrogens, and we want those hydrogens to go out into the lumen, right? not back into over here. And we want this bicarb ion to be go into the interstitial fluid. So that's going to be located on the basal surface, right? So hydrogen ions go this way, bicarb ions go this way based on the distribution of these particular channels, right? And again, this is, which one is this? This is another reabsorption of sodium, maybe in the kidney tubules. Again, sodium is going to go down its concentration gradient over here, right? And then it's going to be kind of pumped out over this way into the higher area right here. So it can diffuse through here and then be pumped out through here. Here's another example in your kidney tubules, right? Those tubules have a lumen with all the filtrate, basically your soon to be P, right? And if we want to get rid of, again, carbon dioxide, one way to do it, make it into this carbonic acid, dissociate. We'll take those hydrogen ions, pump them out into the lumen, pee them out, right? Whereas your bicarb ions, we're going to pump out using this chlorine channel that's on the interstitial fluid side. That is it, right? Uh, as far as I just want to kind of bring that, all this stuff home, they're happening in real anatomical locations. And it's often, it's easier to remember this stuff if you actually have a little bit more concrete sense of what's going on rather than just these cartoon channels, right? All these things have a purpose, right? And, you know, the basic division that we were doing here was passive and active, and then a couple of breakdowns within them right there. So, but that is these transport across membranes. And then at the end there, we talked a little bit about that whole distribution and where you might find these particular channels and why, right?